Here's a quick example of uh, how I start the actual cast net itself. I only put a small amount here where I'm going to pull this, this lead up and I'm going to do my first hanging on this, this little three foot net. This is what it's going to look like as you're hanging it, uh, as you saw in the last one I, I started here. And you notice I've got a pretty good sag on this, so I know that I'm not overstretching my cord for my lead line, so I'm not going to get any twists. Now, it may look like it's twisted here, but that's just an optic illusion because that's where a, uh, a widener is. And as I lift it up, a good indicator to let you know that, that you're... you're spacing in this hanging right here uh, is appropriate as after you've hung about a foot or a foot and a half when you raise it up in a good case it may show that when you raise it up and it's kind of relaxed that the width here is just a little bit more than the width here or the height if you want to call it and uh, it's it's important to do that because it's better that these hangings here are a little bit wider than the width you need because your lead line will be a little longer, but nonetheless, your net will open perfectly. And that way, you don't end up with a net that has a, a short lead line and you're not getting the maximum out of your net. So, uh, I'll uh, in the next one, I'm going to show you how I use the, the, the Prusik here. Uh, to actually get inside here so that uh, the uh, I can hold on to this part right here without distorting or damaging my net. One additional pointer I want to point out, whenever you're, you're hanging your net on here, whenever you're hanging your net, let your net hang down. And what that does is it helps you prevent uh, actually rolling the uh, lead line as you're tying because whenever you come over here and you start tying, if slowly you start tying this way because uh, the net's pulling it down or whatever, uh, the net will actually put the pressure on here and allow it to all lay real nice and straight onto, onto here. Here's the uh, Prusik set between the hangings here so that we don't get any distortion as we're working on the net. We don't want to get any distortion. So... Put it close to this hanging over here, and as you pull tension, it won't start putting pressure on this hanging because you don't want to cause distortion within your net. So this is the easiest way to hang it up so that uh, it won't create any problem with your, with your net as you're working on it. Okay, here I'm going to show you uh, I'm actually hanging the, uh, the, the lead line on the three-foot net. I'm actually showing you how I go about doing it. Get my width, get my length of mesh, bring it down, tighten it up, do the next one. Okay, once we get here, we're going to go ahead and pull our next lead down. Bring everything up tight. Snug it down. Go to your next one. Usually when you keep your twine tight, when you can, makes it a lot easier to control everything. Let's look at this for a minute. Uh, so that you can better understand uh, why we've got double salvage on the on the bottom of our net and why we're using double twine to hang the net on the lead line the commercially made nets you'll if you see this 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 line goes straight across and it's it's pretty much hard bound to the 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 lead line so it doesn't allow any it doesn't allow any play whatsoever in your 
cast net, if you're fishing and you get it hung up on, uh, say, a branch, a log, uh, oysters, or anything like that, you can take and to show you a, a good example here, I'll put it here and simulate that it's actually getting hung up on something. If you notice here, when I pull on this, uh, you can see that you have you have three mesh, three mesh in here that are actually getting uh, into the pull. And if you refer back to when we talked about the strength of the twine, uh, this is number four, and number four is rated at about 30 pounds. So by doubling it, we're gonna double out our uh, what we're putting into our pull. So if we've got uh, three of them involved here, and all three of them are double twine, that's going to put, put us at about 180 pounds of breaking pressure. And that's one of the things I, I mentioned about uh, a commercial cast net. If they're, if they're hung tight against here, they're not allowed to slip at all. And if they're not allowed to slip and, and adjust themselves in their position, where you can see this one's coming straight down on its normal pull point, and then over here, you can see how this is adjusted out to the edge of its pull point uh, on there. So what it's doing is giving you maximum strength here, the most amount of strength that you can actually get in your lead line. And because of that, that's why it's important to have, uh, this is referred to as double salvage on the end of your net, and then uh, using double twine on your uh, lead line whenever you hang it. Okay, the three foot net is done. The lead line is finished on it. Uh, the next thing I have to do is uh, add the braille lines and then we'll dip it. So in the next one in the series will be on how to add the braille lines. Thanks for watching guys.